Listening Library presents Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. Read for you by Paul Bamer. Part One: The Fall. Chapter One. Gregor had pressed his forehead against the screen for so long he could feel a pattern of tiny checks above his eyebrows. He ran his fingers over the bumps and resisted the impulse to let out a primal caveman scream. It was building up in his chest that long guttural howl reserved for real emergencies, like when you ran into a saber-toothed tiger without your club, or your fire went out during the ice age. He even went so far as to open his mouth and take a deep breath before he banged his head back into the screen with a quiet sound of frustration. Ugh! What was the point anyway? It wouldn't change one thing: not the heat, not the boredom, not the endless space of summer laid out before him. He considered waking up Boots, his two-year-old sister, just for a little distraction. But he let her sleep. At least she was cool in the air-conditioned bedroom she shared with their seven-year-old sister Lizzie and their grandma. It was the only air-conditioned room in the apartment. On really hot nights, Gregor and his mother could spread quilts on the floor to sleep. But with five in the room, it wasn't cool, just lukewarm. Gregor got an ice cube from the freezer and rubbed it on his face. He stared out at the courtyard where a stray dog sniffed around an overflowing trash can. The dog set its paws on the rim, tipping the can and sending the garbage across the sidewalk. Gregor caught a glimpse of a couple of shadowy shapes scurrying along the wall and grimaced. Rats. He never really got used to them. Otherwise, the courtyard was deserted. Usually, it was full of kids playing ball, jumping rope, or swinging around the creaky jungle gym. But this morning, the bus had left for camp, and every kid between the ages of four and fourteen had been on it, except one. "I'm sorry, baby, you can't go," his mother had told him a few weeks ago, and she really had been sorry too. He could tell by the look on her face. Someone has to watch Boots while I'm at work, and we both know your grandma can't handle it any more. Of course he knew it. For the last year, his grandma had been slipping in and out of reality. One minute she was clear as a bell, and the next she was calling him Simon. Sample complete. Ready to.